Hello everyone and welcome to Traditions, showcasing the festivities and joys of the holidays, all created by you. From finding that perfect tree to lighting the candles on the menorah, we see how the region celebrates the holidays in their own way. We begin with the joys of being home for the holidays as we remember what really makes the season special with family. I'm Joe Spencer from Lowell, Indiana. Welcome to our family Christmas party. I'm Maureen Spencer Janesco from Lowell, Indiana, and I'm Joe Spencer's daughter. Hi, I'm Dale Janesco from Lowell, Indiana, Joe Spencer's son-in-law. Hi, I'm Ryan Janesco from Griffith, Indiana. I am Joe Spencer's grandson. We have five generations that get together on Christmas Eve. Some of our traditions have started back in the 50s and some of them have been added as technology has changed. We have a dinner that usually includes way too much food. We used to have a birthday cake for my grandfather, which now we do a birthday toast to grandpa up in heaven. And at some point, the selfie stick does come out. The stupid selfie stick comes out. It's just not Christmas without brand new Christmas jammies. This tradition started back in the 60s when my Aunt Barb made everybody matching pajamas. As we wait for Santa Claus, we sing Here Comes Santa Claus. But we don't sing it very well. One day we'll learn how to sing, because half of them are way off key. One of these days we're all going to actually learn the words to the song but Santa doesn't care, he still shows up. And then he passes out gifts to everyone who's on the nice list, which of course all of us are. I really do hope it's all of us. Our newest tradition involves jumping in the hot tub, because what says Merry Christmas more than dashing through the snow and jumping in a tub full of hot water? We used to end the night by going to midnight mass, except uh, many members of the family got a little too old and they can't stay up late enough to actually participate in that. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hey everyone, my name is Maddie. I am from Westmont, Illinois, and my favorite holiday tradition is going to my Uncle Bill's house every Christmas Eve. So every Christmas Eve, around 30 to 40 people come, and we all enjoy each other's company, eat a lot of food, and the cousins have the annual Christmas photo, where we all sit on my Uncle Bill's staircase, and uh, we try to cram ourselves into taking a decent photo. Now, as the years go by, we're getting older and bigger, so we can barely fit on the staircase. And I'm surprised we can all still fit on it every single year because there's about like 10 of us who try to cram into that tiny staircase. It used to be huge when we were younger, I promise. So we do that, and then we eat a lot of dessert, and then we play the annual white elephant game. And for those of you who do not know how to play white elephant, it is where you all have you all have a number and whoever's number gets picked first you have to choose a present so you choose the present and obviously if you're the first one you have to open it so then as the numbers get called throughout the game you have to either open your present or trade with somebody else and if you trade that present you still have to open it and you either get a really terrible present or a really good present so everybody in my family is pretty competitive so we try to fight for best present and um you know the presents range from like 15 to 25 dollars but they're all pretty interesting and by the end of the game you want to make sure you're the last one called because if you're the last one called you get to pick whichever present you want or you can take a risk and open the last present so i love that holiday tradition and i cannot wait to do it again this year so shout out to my uncle bill for hosting it every single year and I hope everybody has a great holiday. Thanks. Hey Lakeshore PBS, um, my name is Maura Kelly and I wanted to just share what my holiday traditions are all about with my family. So my family and I, it's usually on Christmas Eve, I'll spend with my mom, side of the family. 
um, all of my cousins, aunts and uncles, we all get together and have a nice meal together. Um, usually like a white elephant because we're all older now. Um, we don't really have any young kids, but we still do a nice fun white elephant and then um, dessert and maybe we all watch a movie together. Um, usually it's a wonderful life um, until my, my uh, uncle will turn on the, the football game from the day. And then on Christmas Day, I would spend um, the morning with my dad's side um, and my stepmom. And we always have a wonderful meal. And then that evening, um, I get to just go back home and spend time with my brother um, and my dog. And it's really wonderful that my holidays ever since going to college have been, like I get to go home home. It's not, I get to really, enjoy the love and the care um, that I usually, like, what I'm living on my own, I don't get. So just kind of like hanging out with my family is really important to me during the holiday season. And I'm really looking forward to going back and just like reading books with my brother. I love reading Christmas books with him and especially the Polar Express. We read that every year. Um, that him and I both haven't memorized, actually. So it's gonna be really great to see him and my parents and just enjoying the great parts about being home, uh, about sitting by the fire and cuddling up in a blanket in your old house um, where you grew up is really, it's really heartwarming to be able to do that. I'm very lucky to have a place to go for Christmas. I'm Mike Schrag, and this is my wife, Jill, and uh, we're at the Corporate Center of Centier Bank, and uh, we think Christmas time is special. Holiday traditions are something that we really value as a family, uh, our nuclear family, and our overall Centier family. If you stop by our Corporate Center, the first thing you will see is a 21-foot Christmas tree, and our doors are flanked by life-size soldiers that Mike chose to go out and purchase on his own. As you walk in the revolving door, you will see um, a winter wonderland, so to speak. Uh, a lot of um, traditional, uh, elegant decorations that have been made especially for the corporate center. With uh, 61 branches, we have each and every one of them decorated at this time. Uh, it's rather interesting. We have a, a large crew that takes our trees and decorations to them. Uh, we've made it easy for them to decorate. And um, so a lot of the branches and departments will do this on their own and sometimes have a party in the process. Well, I've been around for a while uh, and uh, I can't tell you what year it started. Um, whether it was in 1895 when we family started the bank, but certainly from my recollection in the 1950s, it was going strong. And uh, uh, it was just a whiting office and they had it at a restaurant and they later moved it to a church basement hall, a reception type hall. And uh, we've just, as the organization has grown from maybe 50 people going back then to almost a thousand now, we've had to go to new venues and uh, try and bring everybody in from uh, a lot of different places now as we've expanded to Indianapolis, Fort Wayne, Michigan, and Lafayette. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, everybody. When we think of holiday traditions, we often envision the sharing of gifts, an extravagant feast, or the singing of carols, as if it's been painted by Norman Rockwell himself. Sometimes traditions aren't so traditional, but that's what makes it special. Hi, I'm Amy, I'm from Skokie. Um, I grew up in a half Catholic, half Jewish household. Um, so from my father's side, we grew up having Christmas um, celebrating with my grandparents and that side of the family. 
um, and every year we go out and we get our own real Christmas tree and we wait for it to open a little bit and then we set out all the lights and ornaments in our living room and we pick a night and we just as a family like hang it all together and there's five of us all together so it gets kind of crowded but um, it's a really sweet time so we hang all the ornaments and then we hang like the tinsel and like the star and um, it's really it's really nice and then after we sit on the couch and we turn on the Christmas tree and it's just really sweet and then Christmas Day um, we all spend the day together and we watch movies and it's it's always been a really nice family tradition that we do um, I really like it and so on my mom's side she brought in the Jewish influence and um, I guess throughout the year we celebrate a lot of Jewish holidays, but specifically around this time we celebrate Hanukkah, um, which is starting this weekend and very excited about it. Every night we light a candle in our menorah, we add a, each candle, another candle each night, and um, it's a really sweet time and we give gifts to each other, we kind of like switch off every day and uh, it's just such a nice time to be able to come together and remember what's important and kind of reflect before new year's um on what it means to spend this time as a family and why it's important and kind of reflect on how the year was how we could make it better and where we see ourselves going next year um the holidays is such a nice time for me. Um, kicking it off with Thanksgiving, like it, I enjoy spending it with the family, um, and I'm super excited. Bye. Hi, my name is Olivia, and I have a really unique holiday tradition uh, because my birthday is actually on Christmas Eve, December 24th. So, uh, my whole life, we've always. Uh, combined my birthday with Christmas uh, so on uh, Christmas Day we'll um, get our whole family together um, on my mom and dad's side and we'll all kind of join together and celebrate Christmas and also celebrate my birthday so I would get I always get Christmas gifts and birthday gifts at the same time um, and a birthday cake along with um, the regular Christmas dinner, so um, yeah, I mean some people think that that's unfortunate <laughs> that I don't get kind of my own day to celebrate or I get ripped off on presents or something when I was younger people would say that a lot, but um, it's all I know and I really like um, being able to celebrate when everyone's together and um, they're in a good mood and it's like this great time of year and I get to be with my family and, and people who aren't always in town and it's just this um it's a great it's just like a great um way to way to celebrate a birthday and I have no complaints so I uh yeah I think I have quite a unique holiday tradition Hi, my name is Mary Lou and I wanted to talk a little bit about our family holiday traditions. One thing I consistently do every year is make uh, pizzales. They are an Italian waffle cookie. They're flat. Some people say they look like snowflakes or flour cookies. Um, but I use my sister Alicia's recipe and it's a great memory because all of my aunts made them, my mother made them, my grandmothers made them. I think there was always a silent competition going on behind the scenes as to whose were best. Were they the crispy ones? Were they the soft ones? Were they the almond, the anise flavor, the vanilla, the orange? Um, but I use a, you, you make them on a waffle iron, it's a special Pizzale iron, and my iron I received as a wedding shower gift from the Can Tell Me sisters who were like a second family to me when I was growing up. So that makes it special as well. And I will always pack a, package up a dozen, um, you know, with a pretty bow on it and give to each of our neighbors. They expect those every year now. Uh, and it's, you know, if you have elderly relatives who can't cook or don't cook any longer, um, that's a nice treat for somebody who you don't know who to get, you don't know what to get someone. Um, cookies are always special, homemade ones in particular. 
uh, something else at Christmas time. Uh, I always watch the movie The Family Stone, one of my favorite Christmas movies. And I always ask for a book for Christmas, and, and Santa always brings me one. This year I'm asking for Sebastian Maniscalco's Stay Hungry. And once the family is fed and, and family is visited, um, and everybody's settled in and presents are unwrapped, I will get under a blanket by the fireplace and read my last book of the year. Merry Christmas and an Italian Buon Natale. One of the most memorable things about the holidays are the colors. The emerald green trees, the snow and ivory white, the crimson red poinsettias, it truly is a sight to behold. But as the lights go down, the true colors and character of the holidays step forward as the electric hum of lights ring out for all to see. Next up, we see how lighting has played a big part of the holiday tradition. I used to have a neighbor that lived across the street. He just moved this year, but he's the gentleman that really got me involved into this. Um, I put up some Christmas lights one year, he put up some Christmas lights. A few days later, I put up a few more. A few days later, he put up a few more, and that just went on and on, and it went on for a few years. People were seeing us go back and forth on Facebook, and uh, during that point, we started to have people coming out to see what our lights were like, to see you know, what was going on. And every year, it just kind of built, from, built on from there. Within the last three years, we've taken that display and, and, and our lights actually are, are programmed to go to music. Uh, on the weekend, you know, I'll come home on a Friday or Saturday and there'll be five, six cars lined up watching your light show. It's something that you created. It's just, you know, you feel that Christmas spirit. My kids love coming outside, helping with the lights. My two um, uh, 11 and, and 10 year olds are up there wrapping trees. They're running an extension cords. They've really taken some of the pressure off me. So I, I think it's a love of Christmas throughout our family because without the support of my kids out there helping me, without the support of my wife that obviously lets me spend money on the Christmas lights and, and enjoys the show as well, we wouldn't have this. We partnered up with The Caring Place. We do have a collection box out front, so if anyone drops any donations in, 100% goes to The Caring Place. I think that, that really, this hobby, this uh, love of ours, mine, my family's, really turned into something that, it can't be stopped now. I mean, it's become part of people's traditions. It's become part of who we are, that we know, come November, we're gonna be doing a lot of work on the house. I think it's amazing because you're, we do have this tradition with random people. We do have this tradition with people we don't know. And they're coming to my house to see these lights, our house to see these lights, and that's amazing. Wilmington Lions Club. Island Christmas. This is the entrance to the park. We have many different characters and different scenes. Penguins, Christmas tree area. The trees are decorated by organizations in town. We have the Gingerbread Express. Here you have a nativity scene. And as we keep walking, we got the Snoopy Bunch. That's the Gingerbread Village. Here you have Dora. Smurfs. Here we have a the kids one of the kids' favorites is SpongeBob. So as you can see, it's quite quite a little production. We are going to be hanging out in the city. She's got her stink, stank, stunk t-shirt on, but nothing stinks about this season. We absolutely love Chicago.
Christmas. Sometimes the beginning of the holiday season doesn't start until you found that perfect tree to decorate. Whether it's grown on a farm or comes from a box, a Christmas tree always shines bright and beautiful. Well, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. I'll share with you some of my uh, memories and traditions that, uh, over the holiday season. I'm Larry Breckner, Vice Chair of the Board of Directors for Lakeshore Public Media. Well, growing up, of course, we always had traditional Christmas trees. But then one year, my parents decided to get one of these aluminum flock trees. And I was very fascinated with it. First of all, you, of course, couldn't put Christmas lights on it. But uh, I remember it being in a tree stand that rotated. You had a color wheel to light it up. But they had all these magenta ornaments on it. And I remember laying under the tree for hours, watching this tree slowly rotate, looking at my reflection in there. I'd lay there among the family presents that we gave to each other. No Santa presents at that time. Uh, thereafter, we always had uh, artificial tree. And I remember the next one that replaced that tree was a beautiful green tree. And we had these uh, red satin balls on it. And the satin balls were, uh, it looked kind of like an apple tree. Years later, I discovered those ornaments and used them at my work to decorate things for many, many years. They're 40 years old. One of the traditions we started was opening presents on Christmas Eve. And how that started was when uh, one Christmas, we were going to be away on Christmas Day, and I was concerned about the Santa presents. How would I get to open them because we'd be away? Well, my parents, being pretty clever, decided, well, if you go lay down for a while, we arrange for Santa to bring yours early. So sure enough, I laid down for a while. I don't think I fell asleep. And maybe about an hour later, went there, and the Santa presents were there along with the family presents. So thereafter, we always opened our presents on uh, Christmas Eve. So that was a tradition that we go through to this day. Finally, one little cute tradition with my daughter when she was growing up. Uh, I'd a lot of times pick her up from her grandparents' house in town, and we would sing Let It Snow. She would sing just the Let It Snow part. And the fun part about that is we kept doing that year round until she probably got old enough to drive herself. So that was some of the Breckner family traditions. Hope you have a wonderful holiday, a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and celebrate this great season. Hi, I'm Charlotte Ellis, and I'm eight years old. My favorite thing to do for the holidays is spend time with my family. Every year, we go with Grandma and Grandpa to get our Christmas tree. We took a tractor out to the Christmas tree farm. We looked at about 21 before we found our Christmas tree. Me and my brothers helped cut down our Christmas tree. We used a saw. We both took turns. One turn each. I got the last turn for the tree to fall. Merry Christmas. Hi, I'm Sharon Jackson, show host and reporter here at Lakeshore Public Radio 89.1 FM. Want to wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. My favorite Christmas memory is as a kid, looking, just laying on my back underneath the Christmas tree, staring at the lights, staring at the ornaments, just getting lost in the beauty and the glow. It was like I was walking inside the light, inside the ornament in this like Christmas world. It was all surrounding. Uh, I also loved uh, going to my grandma and grandpa's house with my parents and spending good quality family time, playing games and just having fun and eating good food and, and just uh, enjoying the nice warm fuzzy feeling that I had. I hope you have a great Christmas, Merry Christmas, and thank you so much. Thank you for watching Traditions, and thank you for sharing your traditions with us this holiday season. On behalf of Lakeshore PBS, I'm Whitney Reynolds, wishing you a happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, and happy holidays.